From the heart of the Coachella Valley, this is the Palm Springs Real Estate Buzz on KGX with your host, John Sloan, from the John Sloan Real Estate Group in La Quinta. Well, our guest today includes Stephen Peck. He is the principal attorney and founder of Peck Law Group. And I've got Stephen sitting right here in front of me. Good Saturday morning. Yeah, good Saturday morning to you, too. Thank you for uh, coming on this beautiful day. So let me couch this conversation by saying that as our population grows older, we're finding more and more homeowners selling their homes and moving into nursing homes, senior care facilities, or other similar type of facilities. You know, and I care immensely about these individuals. I mean, they're older and, you know, they're sometimes they're being taken advantage of. And, and this is not a bash on the facilities, so don't misunderstand. However, there are abuses we know that uh, take place, and I, I want you to know that you've got somebody that you can turn to, and that's the reason why I'm having Stephen here as my guest today. So if you have any questions, uh, you could give us a call on our hotline number. But I want to introduce uh, Stephen Peck with the Peck Law Group, and I know you've been in business a long time, Stephen, so tell us a little bit about who you are. Um, I've been... Um practicing law in the state of California for 37 years. Um, uh, I originally grew up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, moved out to Los Angeles in um, 1975, and now um, have opened up an office in the Coachella Valley. Um, my practice now principally does with uh, elder abuse, um, medical and financial elder abuse issues, um, and uh, all around the state of California. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know elder abuse, uh, you, you see certain uh, stories on uh, TV and hear them on the radio, uh, and it seems that uh, we're finding more and more of that happening. Is that right? Yeah. Well, as the population is getting older, more people are um, going into long-term care facilities, uh, skilled nursing facilities, assisted living facilities, and other types of facilities uh, that they need to be in in order to take care of them. So there's a lot more uh, people that are going to these facilities, a lot more being built, and a lot more abuse. Okay, so what should somebody be looking for when they're going into one of these facilities? Well, that's a good question. Um, obviously, um, you want to find a facility that's going to take care of your loved one. Um, a lot of times you go into a facility, you look around, and everything looks good, but afterwards it may not be as good as it looks. So talk to the people there. Um, get references, referrals, uh, find out whether uh, there's websites you can look up uh, on the Internet from the California Department of Health Services, Social Services, that rate these facilities. And you can find out about a lot of them, whether they've had any um, <clears throat> any allegations against them or any problems against them, and uh, give you a good idea of whether or not the facility you're looking at is one that you want to put your loved one in. Yeah. Would it be beneficial to talk with someone like yourself who uh, has been involved with, uh, I'm sure I'll just say litigation or those kind of things? Would uh, would that be beneficial? Well, uh, usually where I come in, you could call me, but um, I come in on the litigation side. Unfortunately, after uh, things have happened, there's yeah. abuse or a problem. But what I would suggest to all you people out there is look on the Internet, talk to your friends, Talk to other people that are in there. You know, go around and look at three or four or five different places. Yeah, I think and, that would be important. And then get an idea. And then obviously it comes down to budget too. I mean, a lot of people don't have the amount of money that is needed to be in a really primo uh, place. So yeah. a lot of it's paid by Medicare or social funding. But regardless of that, when you go into a facility, they assess you. And if they take you in, they have to take care of you. Yeah. Tell me about abuse, and I'm obviously not looking for names or anything like that, but what kind of abuse do you typically see? Well, it runs the gamut. In the facilities, um, you see a lot of things. Um, unfortunately, I have to deal with a lot of issues like bed sores. Really? Yes. Uh, I have, I've litigated hundreds and hundreds of bed sore cases, people that are just not turned, lying on their back. And remember, when you have an older person, their skin integrity is not... As, as good as it was when That's, they're younger. Yeah. They have to watch these people. And the problem is they're not watching people. And the reason they're not watching people is because they usually don't have enough people to watch everybody in there. So 
that's the reason I tell people to go in and watch, make sure things are going to be done. You know, what's interesting about that statement, Stephen, is the cost of being in these facilities is tremendous. And you would think that that by the by paying as much money as you do, and then you take a look at the number of people that are in there, that they would be able to have enough people to take care of these individuals. Well, John, you're right. You would think so. But um, in my experience, there's a lot of understaffing. That's one of the biggest problems. And I think what it comes down to is a lot of these facilities are owned by corporate giants. Mm. And it's all about the money, how much money they can squeeze out for their corporate for their shareholders versus the amount of care that they're supposed to give. So unfortunately, there's a number of people that are going to fall through the cracks and there's going to be abuse and neglect in these facilities. Yeah. Well, other than the uh, pressure sores that you're talking about, what would be another uh, scenario that would be important to talk about? Well, you have people that become dehydrated. Um, they're They're not getting enough water. Sometimes you have people that are not able to drink themselves. They need assistance. Uh, you might see instances where the water is put on the table in front of them in the bed. Nobody helps them drink it. Yeah. A lot of times people don't, their loved ones don't come in to find out that they are dehydrated. Yeah. Um, you get people that are malnourished. They're not getting the food, the same situation. They just throw the food at them. They don't make sure that they're eating. Um, you have a lot of people with tubes uh, that are that are in their stomachs, uh, G-tubes that are fed like that because they can't eat through their mouth. They don't check to see what's going in and going out. So what it really comes down to is watching. And what it, the, the, the principle here is neglect, not doing what they're supposed to do. And it's real simple. When they take in an individual in a facility, they assess that individual. And if they take them in, they have to take care of that individual. Right. So talk about these binding arbitration agreements that you get yourself into on behalf of the client. Well, a lot of facilities, most facilities, have binding arbitration agreements. And what they usually do is when um, you're bringing your loved one, sibling or or parent, excuse me, going into a facility, they throw a... um, an admission agreement in you, and they bury within that admission agreement an arbitration agreement. And that arbitration agreement uh, basically wipes out your right if there is a problem and you have a, and you're damaged in a facility, you hurt a facility, it, uh, it obviates your chance to have a trial by jury. And so I tell, and you don't have to sign it. In a skilled nursing facility environment, the failure to sign that agreement cannot be used as a condition for not admitting you to a facility. So you don't have to sign it to be admitted. They mm. want you to sign it because they want you to give up your right to a, your constitutional right to a jury trial. Well, it sounds to me that if you're going to be signing a contract, you're going to want somebody to take a look at it that knows what contracts are all about. How often do you find someone who's going into a facility like that that reaches out to an attorney to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to put him in jeopardy. Unfortunately, that rarely happens. Wow. Because a lot of times the elder dependent adult that's going into this facility, it's a rush to get them in there. Yeah. And they're, they're um, discharged from an acute care facility like a hospital sent over there. So they don't have a lot of time. They want to make sure that their, their loved one is cared for and uh, put into the right facility so they they sign yeah. and the people tell them and the people in the admissions office tell them, no problem just sign this document put it in front of them and a lot of time it's not read or actually spelled out to them so they really don't know what they're getting themselves into and i'm going to assume that the siblings or someone who is in their care is probably not even around to even take a look at these documents well they are they are they are sometimes that's even sadder they, they are but you, you know, there's a lot of legalities uh, depending upon whether the person that's bringing this person to the facility um, has a power of attorney, as an agent of the elder dependent adult that's going to the facility. They might have the ability to sign on behalf of the elder, okay? Mm-hmm. But a lot of times they're not, and the facilities try to get these individuals to sign these documents as the legal representative or uh, of, of the elder and try to um, hold try to get them to um, uh, make sure that the arbitration agreement is valid. Okay. Yeah. What else can you give a, tell us about the, the kind of work that you're doing uh, with these uh, individuals that are in the nursing homes? 
Well, what I like to do, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've litigated thousands and thousands of cases, and I've learned a lot about the laws in the state of California in regards to um, elder abuse, elder care, uh, these long-term care facilities. So um, I've had the luxury of being able to speak around the state of California and tell people their rights, tell them what type of what these admission agreements mean, the legalities of these agreements, these arbitration agreements, what rights they have to and care. Um, there's so many laws, uh, federal laws and state laws, that dictate how these particular facilities are supposed to govern themselves. So I try to educate the people. I try to let people know what's going on. That's fantastic. We are talking with Stephen Peck. He's the principal attorney and founder of Peck Law Group, and we're going to continue talking with Stephen when we come right back. Call the Palm Springs Real Estate Buzz 24-hour hotline with any real estate questions at 760-394-6680. Now, back to your host, John Sloan on KGX. All right, we are back here with Stephen Peck. Stephen is an attorney. He is the founder and principal attorney for the Peck Law Group. And again, I want to thank you for coming in this morning. That was very good information for our listeners Uh you know, the elderly population obviously is growing here in the desert, uh, so I really felt that this was uh, important to impart on them. But you do other things as well besides the nursing home uh, scenario. And uh, as I look at your list here from your website, you, you've you got a lot of things going on. So tell me some of the other things that uh, you run into uh, with your law group. Um, we get into... Um a lot of uh, interesting personal injury cases, um, catastrophic people that are seriously injured, uh, premises liability cases, uh, brain injury cases, more serious and catastrophic injury type of matters. And uh, I've been handling and litigating and have tried many of those over the year all over the state of California. Yeah. Uh, so I see you have truck accidents, motorcycle accidents, metal, medical malpractice. Now, that obviously goes beyond the nursing homes as well. What kind of medical malpractice do you typically find? Well, you know, um, it runs the gamut. It's hard to be really specific in regards to medical malpractice, but it, it, it calls for things that happen uh, by medical professionals where, they, where, their, where their actions are below the standard of care. Um, it could be many different things, probably too numerous to yeah. talk about at station. But, you know, when you're injured in a in a uh, facility, a medical care facility, by a doctor or health care provider, um, then you might have a medical malpractice claim. Okay. So you just recently uh, moved here to the desert. Well, I think you said you had a, have had a place here for a while. Yeah, yeah. I um I was lucky enough to move out to the desert in December of 2016. Oh, there you go. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm real happy to be out here. Great, great. And what brought you here? Just to uh, start up the, the, the a different part of your uh, business or just to come here to enjoy and find out that there was opportunities? You know, originally um, I bought a house out here on a country club on a golf course and I figured I was going to retire and take it easy. But uh, my personality, I said to myself, I can only play golf so many times a day. So I wanted yeah. to do something. So um, I started an office out here. And I um, it keeps me busy. And I like doing it. I've met a lot of people. And uh, I'm enjoying, you know, the combination of working and playing in the Coach L Valley. All right. Well, Stephen, I want to thank you again for uh, stopping in this uh, wonderful Saturday morning. And Tell us how we can get a hold of you. Well, it's easy. Um, my website is uh, Um You could reach me toll-free at area code 866-999-9085 or in the uh, Coachella Valley, area code 760-898-7722. You got them all. All right, here we are, Stephen Peck, Principal Attorney and Founder of the Peck Law Group. You're listening to the Palm Springs Real Estate Buzz on KGX with John Sloan of the John Sloan Real Estate Group at Keller Williams Realty, serving Palm Springs, Cathedral City, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, Indian Wells, La Quinta, Indio, Coachella, Desert Hot Springs, and any of your real estate needs around the world.